amplified. For months now, President Biden's approval ratings have been plummeting. And as of last week, a majority of Americans are not happy with his performance. According to one survey, 51% of respondents disapprove, while 44% give his presidency the thumbs up. This snapshot encompasses all Americans, but what about black Americans? A closer look reveals a lot. Hit Strategies, a market research firm seeking to empower underrepresented people, has been keeping tabs on trends in the black community through its Black Track Poll, a monthly subscription-based survey, and February's findings are right in line with the rest of the country. No surprise there. We're here to talk about America's persistent discontent with President Biden and the Democratic Party is Terrence Woodbury, a Democratic pollster and CEO and founding partner of Hit Strategies. Terrence, thank you so much for coming back on Amplified. All right, give us a brief overview of February's Black Track poll. Top line it, if you will. Thank you so much for having me on, Laverne. You know, we are, we've been conducting this poll since 2019. It's to keep a really close pulse on what are the, the most loyal voters in the Democratic coalition. And what we're finding amongst black voters is that there, there, there has been, in fact, a precipitous decline in their support for Joe Biden from 90%, which is you know near Obama level support um, in January of 2020 when he was first elected, down to just 73%. Now that 17 point drop is, uh, is really concentrated amongst younger voters. Um, where, the, where, where his approval rating is just 64% amongst black voters under the age of 50. And so this, is, this, this points to a real problem as we go into the midterm election cycle, uh, where, where, with, the, with the most loyal voters um, beginning, to, beginning to, to lose confidence as they do not see enough progress on the issues that are most important to them. Well, Americans, including Democrats, have been unhappy with President Biden and the Democratic Party for months. Does your data tell you anything? Why is that? Does the party have a messaging or a policy issue? Is it both? That's exactly right, Laverne. I think what we're seeing here in, folk, in, in both the polls and in the focus groups are both a messaging and a governing problem. Uh, the governing problem that, they, that, that while, while legislation is being passed and progress is being made, we're having a, they're not doing a good job connecting the legislation, the resources to the people that need them the most. You know, a, 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 a voter told me in focus groups just last week that passing legislation is a win for people in Washington. It's a win for politicians. It's not a win for voters until the, the resources and the interventions of that legislation actually reach it, re reaches the, vote, the voters that need them. And the messaging problem that, the, that, that while progress has been made, they are not doing a good job of telling that story. And so uh, in focus groups, we presented uh, a, a graphic that was how it started versus how it's going. And when you look across all of the most important issues for black voters from racism and economy um, and, and the COVID-19 crises, so much progress has been made uh, and, and, and that those, those dots are not being connected. We call it click here messaging, Laverne. You know, when, when we needed their votes during the 2020 cycle, we delivered to the palms of their hands, click here to, to find out if you're registered. Click here to find your polling location. Click here to request your mail-in ballot. Well, now they need to click here to, to access the $45 billion in rentals assistance. They need to click here to, to, to access the 16 million jobs that were created by the infrastructure bill. And so until we are able to deliver those resources, those programs, and those jobs to the palms of their hands, we're going to continue to see this precipitous decline amongst Black voters. Yeah, and I'm wondering, Terrence, are people paying attention to congressional inaction as well, specifically the legislation that's still on the ropes, like Build Back Better, the George Floyd Act, and the Voting Rights Act? You know, there's a, there, there's a, a, a big divide here. When, when we look at Black voters, you know, obviously there, there are gender, uh, gender differences. There's also generational differences. But the biggest difference that we're finding um, is, not amongst, is, is not amongst age, or, or even uh, geography or demographics, it, it's those who are paying attention and those who are not. And so amongst black voters that are paying attention, a lot of our viewers here tonight, uh, they are frustrated with the uh, stagnation in Congress. They are very frustrated with Senator Manchin and Sen Senator Sinema, um, the, the, the stalwart Democrats. Uh, and and what, I, you know, uh, what, I, what, I, what I 
point to as not only the most loyal uh, voters, but when you look at black seniors, you're, you're also talking about the most likely voters. Um, and so they, they, they're paying attention and they're frustrated. But when you look at that other side, the, the less engaged, uh, the, 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 that cynical group that, um, that we were able to surge in 2020, that we were able to, to bring into the electorate in 2020, those folks are not paying attention as much. They don't actually care what's happening in Congress. They care what's, hap what's happening at their kitchen tables. They care about, uh, about education and, their, and, their, and their, their, their students' schools. And that's the part where we have to, have to start connecting uh, the, the progress and, and the resources that are coming out of Washington, tremendous resources uh, coming out of Washington right now to, to really help people. And for folks that aren't paying attention, they don't know what Congress has passed or what Congress hasn't passed. All they know is what's happening uh, at their kitchen table and, and in their households. Yeah, absolutely. And Terrence, let's also talk about the culture wars, because we saw how Republicans were very effective in waging these battles leading up to last November's elections, going after critical race theory, mask and vaccine mandates, policing, those types of things. So what is the Democratic Party going to do now to counteract the GOP culture war narrative? And, and more importantly, what should they be doing? You know, this, is, this has become a, a very active debate uh, amongst Democrats is how to respond to racism as a strategy, as it becomes more clear that Republicans are willing and, and quite effective at harnessing that racial resentment, uh, that 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 they will that that what we what we saw in 2020, what we saw in Virginia just last year, is that they are willing uh, willing to 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 yield this uh, this and weaponize uh, race and racism. And so I, I do believe that Democrats have a moral imperative, um, but also a strategic imperative to take an aggressively anti-racist uh, 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 approach and 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 um, application. Uh, to to, the, to this this upcoming election cycle, as the country continues to diversify more rapidly, Democrats' response to overt and explicit racism cannot simply be that we will raise the minimum wage or that we will you know create more jobs. We have to create and present an alternative vision of a future uh, of of an American future where diversity is in fact our strength. And until they lean into that, this is a part of what we're seeing with this frustration amongst black voters who, you know, I, I remind a lot of the Democrats that we work with, the summer of unrest, the summer of 2020, this wasn't the civil rights movement. This wasn't 50 or 60 years ago. The young people that took to the streets in protest after George Floyd's murder in every state, in all 50 states, we saw young people taking to the streets. Those are the voters that are paying attention. And for many of those voters, they are single issue voters and their single issue is racism. And Democrats are gonna have to uh, have to have a response to, to, to what we're seeing come out of the Republican Party. And also, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, they issued an internal report that warned against the dangers of not being forceful against the GOP's attacks as they engage in virtue signaling. Can you talk about those warnings, Terrence, and how they advise Democrats to fight back on certain issues? Absolutely. So I was a part of this poll uh, for the with the DCCC and in transparency, we are a DCCC pollster. And what 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 they recommend is to is to take an an assertively uh, um, uh, opposite assertively, I'm sorry, assert their opposition uh, to some of these to some of these racial and and culture war issues. Uh, but you know, I, I think that we're going to have to take a different approach here. While it is important for us to you know declare our support uh for police uh for, for 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 police as a pillar of the community for teachers and their right to teach true and accurate history we democrats also have to say what they are for and not just what they are against um and, and i i think they can mm -hmm. lean into some of these issues where in fact uh there is a majority of support majority uh of americans not just democrats uh, support reforming the police to make them uh, to improve the relationship between police and communities of color. A majority of Americans, not just Democrats, support teachers teaching true and accurate history, including the hard parts of our history. And I believe that if Democrats put forth a, a message, one that shows that, that Republicans believe that we are too weak to look into the past, uh, to look into the darkest parts of our history, that we are too weak to embrace differences but Democrats believe that we are in fact strong enough 
to look into that darkness, to look into that past and forge a brighter future, I think that they will attract a, a diverse coalition uh, that looks a lot more like the rapidly diversifying electorate. Well, here we are now with the 2022 midterms looming. So what then should Dems be laser focused on? Well, we're going to have to walk and chew gum here. You know, it is very important to lean into the uh, the, the the economic crises that people are feeling, even though uh, the, by, by so many metrics, the economy is thriving. The jobs numbers uh, were, were, uh, were so impressive just last month. But inflation rates uh, are, are really, really uh, making people feel the, the pinch of this of this economy. And so while we are going to have to lean into some of these cultural issues and present a, a, an assertively anti-racist message, Democrats are also going to have to uh, have to have a response for inflation. And we were just in focus groups last week where black voters aren't blaming Joe Biden for inflation. In fact, they see it as more of a, a cyclical um, uh, uh, occurrence, but they will blame him for not fixing it. They do expect him to have a response for it. And so uh, the, the clock is ticking because every Democrat on the ballot is going to be is going to have to answer uh, to, to these numbers that we're seeing in, in, in our latest black track, that while Joe Biden is not on the ballot, his approval rating is certainly on the ballot next to many of the Democrats up and down the ticket. Yeah, clock is ticking. Thank you so much, Terrence Woodbury, Democratic pollster and co-founder at Hit Strategies. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Appreciate it.